let's get started. I hope you guys are doing well today. Today we are talking about trading the power hour, the the most intense part of the day, perhaps besides the first opening minute. So to begin with, uh, I've got my linen shirt, got a linen shirt on, and um, it's summertime here. Uh, I have fully embraced uh, Jimmy Buffett. A Jimmy Buffett lifestyle. Um, it's five o'clock somewhere, but instead of uh, five o'clock alcohol, I just have coffee. And then to water that down, we've got a fresca. So that's what we brought to you today. Bye. And as always, options involve risks. They're not suitable for all investors. Everything I'm about to talk about today is backward looking and not forward looking. Um, as always, Please consult with your financial advisor, and uh, you should do that because this is just for entertainment purposes. This is not to be construed as financial advice. So I hope you are entertained today. So, quick question: Who all trades the power? And the power hour being three to four p.m. Sweet, we got some power hour traders in here. For sure, Wizzy's is. And why wouldn't you, right? Why wouldn't you? Everyone thinks, like, man, it'd be nice to be out by three. And it certainly would be fun to be out by three. And hopefully plenty of times in the day you are. But there's something to be said for that last hour of trading. Maybe you've had a rough day and you're just completely revenge trading. Don't do that. Side note. But maybe you're looking for some more opportunities where there's movement. There certainly is movement in the last hour of the day. So what we're going to look at today is a couple of tests. And I'm going to um, just go ahead and say straight away that the test, whew, what is he? The, the tests that I'm going to show you um, are different in nature, perhaps, than what some of you guys do. But I try to do a varied approach. Just showing a bunch of different things off. Um, I'll talk about one that I didn't have time to do because not a not a not to be sad or anything, but my grandpa's getting close to passing away, so spending much of time with him. But there was one I've been working on, and I just can't get it right. And until I get it right, I don't want to show you. But um, I, I, I'll give you the premise later, and I, no doubt you guys will be able to figure it out. So, if you guys don't have any questions, we are going to jump right in. So let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Anybody see my screen? Yeah, thank you, Gary. Okay, here we go. So first off, what are some caveats to power? Right? When we're looking at power hour trades, there's a couple of things that we're assuming. I think in these, we are assuming that these are zero day trades, right? I, no doubt you can trade the power hour, not based on zero day. Um, but I assume for the sake of argument here that most of you all are trading zero day or, or at least attempting to be out by the end of the day. Is that correct? Also, don't forget, this is Asylum 13. That's my go-to for cigar lounges. Uh, I call this one overcompensation. But is that, is that a fair caveat? You guys are trying to be done by the end of the day. You're not holding overnight these trades. Thank you. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go through each of these. And again, the idea being to be out by the end of the day. And so for these purposes, I'm putting these on from 3.01 p.m. to 3.55 p.m. So we're going to be out five minutes before close. And obviously in real life, you might hold it longer. You might get in right at 3. You might get in 2.55, right? Uh, as always... 
if you depend on the minute of the test, be careful because you might be introducing fragility into your back testing. We certainly don't want to do that. We want to be, we want to find tests that work in ranges rather than specific minutes and things like that. So with that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to look through these tests here and we will start with some basics and then I'll go through it. So, and feel free to ask any questions uh, if you have any. Let me first share this with you. Okay. So, what this is, is a condor, the last hour condor, and we are collecting some money in the process. Rather than do it by deltas, we're doing it by money. Well, most of these tests, for today's purposes, are run the last two years. You can run them different times, but because zero day is so prevalent in the last few years, uh, I wanted to do that more. So, um, what we're doing, we're going to sell a put spread that is collecting $1.50 at the shorts and the long is 25 points away. Same thing for the call. We're going to collect $1.50 for the call. We're going to uh, buy the call at 25 points away. We're going to put this on at 3.01 p.m. every day using Zach DTE, Zach Strike Offsets, 20% of our portfolio. And we're going to exit the trade at 3.55. That's the only exit condition for this one. And I want to show you something interesting and have a quick little discussion about this. Opening fees are $1.70. Closing fees are 70 cents. Nothing crazy about that. My entry slippage is $0.05. Cents. I presume I'm going to be able to get in without too much trouble. But I'm presuming in this test that at 355 my exit slippage is going to be $0.30. Cents. Now, what do you guys think about that? Is that realistic? Is that unrealistic? As you have traded last-minute spreads before, would you increase that, decrease that? For those who are new, if you click Cigar Lounge or hover it over it, you can see open chat. Thirty cent slippage. Probably not what we're putting on most of our tests, correct? But for this one, we wanna we wanna be a little bit more conservative, right? So we're putting that on with the thirty percent thirty percent exit slippage, and obviously you know, not great, right? We have a 70% drawdown taking place, a large chunk of uh, 21. Why do you think the drawdown was happening on a credit, a last minute credit spread in 21? Any takers? Any thoughts about why that would be the case? Okay. Well, if you look at 21, I'm going to leave you, leave you with that, yeah. yeah, we had some weird movements at the end of the day in 21. You can go back and look at that. But let's look at the trade log. You win 75% of the time, so you're winning most of the time, right? So immediately, if you see a high win percent rate and a huge drawdown based on the exit condition that's just time-based, what are ways that you could improve that? Any takers? What would be the normal operating procedure for back tests when you see a high win percentage and a big drawdown? Obviously, selling credit spreads, that's kind of the name of the game. High win percentage, big drawdown. But what would, what would be things that you would approve of? Uh, yeah, you have a stop, stop loss, add a, a stop loss to it, play with the stop loss. Yep, add a profit target. That's correct. And no doubt you guys can do that, but for these purposes, we're not doing that today. Today, we're just looking at the time on this one, at least. So this is pretty straightforward, right? You're just selling, selling on average, collecting anywhere from two to three bucks. And you just hopefully collecting that. And you do most of the time. And then sometimes you don't. Sometimes it kind of uh, blows past you. Now, what's interesting about this is you look at these like losers. 
we put it on when it was 43.27. It, it rose nine points and we lost, right? And it's that's a mix of exiting at that specified time, but it's also the fact that, and you guys know this, the last hour, you're not going to have that much premium, right? You're not going to have that much stuff available in this. So yes, the probabilities are high, but you do, if, you, if you're selling a small amount of credit, your chance of, you're not going to be that far away, even if you think you're doing small amounts of credit, and, and it actually bites you a little bit more. So at the end of the day, when you are, sell, well, really any time of the day, but especially at the end of the day, when you're selling premium and you're trying to get far away, right, yes, your probability is going to be high, but also you really aren't that far away. So if there is any movement, like in the, a nine point, you know, nine point movement in an hour, you got out, you lost. You just don't have much. And as as Wizzy has said in this community time and time again, hey, hey, maybe sell more expensive options. So something to think about. Maybe don't try to. Do that, and especially I would say with the last hour, I don't have any like crazy ones, but in the last hour, people selling five delta spreads the last hour, uh, may God be with you. Like it, it is, like it is the, it's the definition. Fourth of July is coming up. I I put a video in SPX uh, channel this weekend. There was just uh, some fireworks going off. That's gamma. That's end of day gamma. You're selling a bunch of spreads far out. Good luck to you. I wish you the best. Anyway, let's keep going. So notice this is with that conservative exit slippage. It's with 30%. I want to show you the same one, though, with our standard 5% slippage. Same test. Instead of 30% slippage, 5% slippage. That's a different P&L, right? That is a different P&L. Now, what's interesting again about that, though, is um, last hour Condor, your win percentage is the same. Everything's about the same. Drawdown's the same. It's just that we have 5% slippage. Uh, sorry, 5%, 5 cents. Not 5%, 5 cents slippage. So here's an interesting question for you, and this is where you kind of have to, like, do some forward testing. What do you think is realistic? Which one is more realistic for that type of trade? As you guys have traded before. I like it. It's always split the difference. All right? Always split the difference. When you say, I'm saying 30 cents, you're saying 5 cents, it might be a dollar. It might be 20 cents. That's something that you'd have to figure out the time. It depends on obviously your broke, all sorts of different things. But... We want to be conservative with these tests. We've always said this. The point of back testing is not to feel good about yourself. The point is to build confidence, right? And so um, we want to we want to be we want to be uh, good boys and girls. We want to be conservative when it comes to back testing. So that's that. Let's keep going. This one's interesting, and this is. Uh, another view of it. So we've looked at, we've looked at, you know, not crazy low delta, but we're collecting a little bit of money, two to three bucks. Now we're doing something completely opposite. This time, we're going to sell an in the money spread, right? Uh, basically, basically, I can't guarantee you that's the case, but basically, because what we're doing is at three o'clock. We're going to be selling a put that collects $6 and selling a call that collects $6. And we are going to buy a put and a call that costs five cents each. Same time, that TT, 20% of the portfolio, same exit condition. But we are, we have no exit slippage because uh, basically we have no stop loss or anything. We're just testing this one. So but for the entry slippage, we're adding a bunch of slippage. So we're going into it saying we're going to assume 40% entry slippage. Let me show 
shared with you. And this is interesting because it gives you the idea of saying, what happens if we collect a lot of premium at the, at the final hour? We collect a lot of premium and we just exit. Uh, am I, did I say 40% again? Oh, John, good catch here. 40 cents. Um, this one's interesting to me, right? Because you do have a drawdown, you know, but overall 67%, that's kind of like the gold standard of premium selling, whatever. Um, but if you look at this, so say for instance, the June 30th, the opening price is 44.53. You're selling a put at the 44.55 strike and you're selling a call at the 44.50 strike. So it's almost a straddle, but in fact, it's actually kind of a inverted straddle by a strike, right? So you're kind of like, if this is the straddle, that's the straddle, you're kind of like that. That's the, uh, if anybody screenshots that too, it may be just look insane. So straddle, that, right? Any questions about that one? Again, if we were taking a profit target, if we were taking, that's right, yeah, each day is going to be different with it, but it gives you an idea. If we were taking a profit target, I would be highly suspect, suspect and this is where you definitely would want to hit the profit target before you exit, right? You'd want that double stop. Because as we know in the money, options are notorious for fake profits and stuff like that. That's right. And so what you'd want to do is you would definitely want to add something. You could play around with it. I mean, for right now, let's see here. Let's just add 40% to that, too. This is uh, going to absolutely murder this test. But it's an interesting um, it's an interesting idea. And I'm going to show you something with this one why it's interesting. Thank you. <laughs> but from here on out. Whenever I say percent, just always assume percent, as you guys are already. Thank you very much. Okay, so it's still profitable, which is a pretty crazy entry and exit slippage then. So, but I want to show you something interesting about that. Let's take that off for a second. Let's take this and let's say 10 cents and let's say 20 cents. And then let's do this. Let's instead of six dollars, let's do four dollars. Okay, so it's not going to be in the money at this point, probably, most likely for most of them. Let's run that and see how it does. And this is what I wanted to show you. You could actually do. Let's do it three three dollars. This is an interesting test to me because it, this one more than anyone shows the premise of power hour as I, as I read it. It's a fool's errand to try to get high probability in power hour, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes, not financial advice. It's a fool's errand to get high probability, low premium trade in power hour because gamma you're, you're almost like it's more gamma than delta at a certain extent. And you don't want to be short gamma for the final hour without getting paid for it. And that's what you're doing with a low delta, low premium spread the last hour. You're basically saying, I want to feel good about winning 90 to 90%. I, I want to be a high probability trader. And you might have a losing test. Because in the process of trying to ramp that up, you might have 100 contracts on where it's like a 10 cent premium or a 20 cent premium, right? This isn't 2018. Like we've all been down this road before and hopefully enough people have been hurt to understand that like you don't want to be collecting five, 10 cents the final hour of trading, not financial, just entertainment purposes. Uh, 
Because what this test shows us is that there's a certain point where if we kept going down three dollars, you you the more premium when you're collecting a healthy amount of premium, your chances are just greater going into the close. Sure. So we're gonna take off the early exit. We're gonna just let it expire. Yeah, it doesn't really improve it too much. But you know, it might improve it if you re if you re-ran it now with the straddles and all that stuff. Putting putting more premium into it, you might be in better shape at that point. But the idea holds, and it uh, if you hear one thing, what I'm saying today, this would be the thing I'm saying is when you're thinking about the last hour, don't get cute. Don't think high probability wins. You you are an option trader. If you're selling premium, you're collecting money. You want to keep that money. And so less contracts, more premium equals, in my opinion, more sanity, more uh, not 4.05 p.m. crying, uh, not going on drives at 4.05 by yourself because you're sad. Um, more, more premium, less contracts. Is, is much better finance, not financial advice, entertainment advice than, than uh, 120 cent contracts that you win 95% of the time on. And this is probably, in my opinion, good thinking for the whole day, but especially the power hour. Any questions about that test? Okay, let's keep it going. Okay, next up is a calendarized iron fly. You know, in Option Omega Land, we weren't going to do one of these square lounges with having something calendarized. If you've ever seen the show Portlandia, just get uh, put a bird on it. That's what we, that's what we, that's what we do in Option Omega. Just put a calendar up. When in doubt, it's a Monday, put a calendar up. You know, you spill coffee on your shirt, put a calendar up. That's the way we look at things here. So, let me share this one with you. I'm sure I need to save it. Okay. A calendarized fly. We're selling the guts. We're, we're basically selling a straddle. And we're buying 25 points out one day out. We're going to be ex we're going to be gone. We're not going to hold this overnight. We're going to exit it. Um, but we're we're going to just feel a little safer by having those little one days on there instead of the zero days, right? That's all we're going to do. So this one's got two exit conditions. We're going to exit through fifty five like before, but we're also just going to take a profit target of ten percent. Now, why would I be happy with a 10% profit target on a trade like this versus the other one? Why would, why would I take 10% here? Any takers? That's right. To a certain extent, G-Money, it's a calendar. Uh, to a certain extent, this might be a credit. This might be a debit, depending on what the market's doing. Because the longs are going to increase in value. Right? Because I know I'm not going to hold this overnight. So I'm happy just to get out. Right, it's a it, it has a more more probable problem. Yeah, it, there's a greater chance that it's going to be a debit trade 
as well, depending on the market. Sometimes it'll be a tight end. So I'm happy to just get out. I'm happy just to take it, you know? Uh, no one's trying to be a hero here. And because of that, I'm requiring the two hits of the profit target. Now, I don't have any entry and exit slippage on this that would be conservative. You can add that yourself for this one. You, you, you get the gist of it at this point. So I'm not going to show two of them each time. But I like this. I want to show you one thing real quick with this, too. If we don't calendarize it and we just do 25.0 day spread, what this looks like. That, my friends, is the is the benefit of just every once in a while taking off that zero day and putting on a one day. Crazy. It's just crazy to me. And it's crazy to me that people don't do it. Now, the other part of this, people say, well, yeah, but you show that 10%. And that's fair. Let's take this off. Let's take that off and run it. Why, why the difference? Think about that for a second from like a, let's talk about the philosophy a little bit. What, how could that make such a big difference? <laughs> well, that's true. Because it's just better. It's better. That's right. That's right. Your your longs are decaying rapidly, right? So really, with a fly, a twenty five point each direction fly, zero day with an hour left, you really are banking on it, just not doing anything. But as we know, markets move the last hour. So rather than it, the calendarized fly is one of my favorite trades, just talk in my book a little bit, because the idea of it is interesting. Because if you have a fly, a zero day fly, you really want it to expire. Let, just for the, the final sake of it, let's rerun this and take off the uh, exit time. So now we're just, this is, this is a set it and forget it now, right? And that's really what you want with your fly. You just want to set it and forget it and have like a winner. But the problem is any movement, you just don't have that much, you don't have that much ability to do anything with it. It really is just kind of a lotto, right? You'd be, you'd be much better served in my mind with a zero day is to pick like a gamma strike or pick your lucky strike or pick a favorite strike or pick your family's favorite strike, your, your family crest strike, whatever strike it is, and just put it there and just let it be. But maybe it's 10 points wide or five points wide or something like that, right? You'd be much better served than that than trying to, at a certain point in the day, pin it and then just hope for an hour that you're just going to expire in the middle. That to me doesn't, you know, whereas the calendarized iron fly, you're playing a different game. You have the ability taking that profit target to get out. And again, let's just go back to it. You're winning 87% of the time. Why? Because with a calendarized fly, you can get out at a, there, and there's a decent chance that you're going to get out for a profit right whereas the the other fly it really said and forget it now the nice thing about this one though too is if it doesn't move at all you are getting rapid decay on those shorts on that at the money straddle so it it gives you a, a different out it, it for me it gives me confidence that i'm going to be able to put this on every day and depending on what the market's doing i'm going to either going to get out 10 percent or i'm going to um 
let it ride, right? In real life, I would probably let it expire and then close the longs maybe after the market or do something crazy. But, but, but that's not financial advice. That's sort of being stupid. That's just my personal stuff. But with this, I like it. Anyway, I'm not going to keep going on. But you guys, you guys understand my level of calendarized fly at this point. So, speaking of calendarized things, let's up it. Let's let's for the final two. Let's uh, let's up the ante a little bit. I know, I know. But don't not entertainment purposes. It, purely entertainment purposes. So let's do this. This is actually one of those. It's an adjusted trade based on one of the uh, trade of the year candidates last year. Except for we're not going to hold it. We're going to get out. So at 301, we're going to sell two 35 Delta 01 calendars. And we're going to buy one 50 Delta all calendar. Uh, yeah, Jim, it, brokerages are weird. I'm gonna it, never assume that anything. Wizzy's right. Never assume anything is working after 4 p.m. That's a good. That's a good safe advice to have it. Um. So two 35 delta put calendars, one 50 delta call calendar, zero one. And at the profit target of 10 percent, we're gonna close half of them and then the rest of them we're going to exit the trade at 355 so i this is not conservative at all but i like this one a lot and so i wanted to show you this it's kind of a two by one ratioed calendar uh why do that what why are we doing a two by one kind of ratio to the calendars here what, looking at those deltas, what does that give you? Yeah, thank you. That's more realistic. Thank you, Izzy. Why would that be the case? Why would we why would we do two a two to one? What is the relationship between these two and how that would operate? Any takers? So when you're selling premium and SPX, which side has skew? That's right, because with grandma. It's it's straightforward. If grandparents tell you to do something, you should always listen to them. Uh, as a general rule, again, not financial advice. Uh, always listen to your grandma. And probably because your grandma was he knows that there is such a thing as put skew and SPX. Puts in general are going to be more expensive than calls. If you were in GameStop or another equity, what would would it be put skew or call skew? Would the calls be at GameStop when it was going nuts? Were calls more expensive or puts more expensive? Matt, I know he knew he's in. Matt knows this world. Stonks only go up is what our grandchildren tell us. Grandparents understand put skew. Grandkids tell us stonks only go up. Um, because stonks only go up in equities. I'm about to mute because I'm about to massive sneeze. Watch this. That's a false alarm. Okay. Because there's put skew in SPX, puts are going to be more expensive. So if you model this out and graph this out like an option strat or, or your brokerage or something like that, you'll notice that there's room to run on the upside a little bit, but there's actually a little bit more room to run on the downside. And so it, it's a nice ratio is sometimes a really nice if you can understand the Greeks behind them, um, it gives you some leeway, especially power hour where you know there's going to be movement and things like that. And so this is a type of trade where it's not a 101 trade, but if you once you understand the Greeks, it's relatively simple. It's it, there's not anything too crazy about this, especially it's 54 minutes. This is a 54 minute trade. 
so you're not doing any adjustments. You're not it's not multi day. You're not having to do crazy stuff like that. Now there's another part to this whole process. I'm gonna do one more thing and then I will end. I'm gonna with some kind of final thoughts. Let's add let's add some more conservative slippage. Nothing nothing to say of stop loss of slippage. Let's see what this does. Okay. It's not terrible. Not terrible. I like it. Um let's talk about some final thoughts with this. When you're trading these type of trades, a couple of things that you'll want to pay attention to is power hour means certain things to certain people, but it means different things at different times. That's like a yogi bearism. Um, would you trade power hour during the Fed announcement, FOMC announcement? Lord knows I have. But would you? Or should you? Should you relative? Would you? You, you, you people in here, would you trade power hour during FOMC? If you had a set mechanical, set it and forget it trade that kills it every year, would you do that during FOMC? Well, it's up to you. I have no answer to that, right? It depends on your trade. It depends on your strategy. Um, there are certain trades I would definitely trade during FOMC power hour. There are certain trades I would not touch if you were literally tripling the premium you give me. So it's a triple premium bonus. I still would not trade that trade. Um, so it really just depends on your trading style. But it's uh, I say that to say one of the benefits of Option Omega is we have blackout dates. And you would be wise to know yourself and to, if you know that you're not going to trade that, put blackout days in. Again, you could reverse that. There might be trades that you definitely would trade only on those days. And we've, we've done cigar launches on that. And you can do light out days, days you want to trade. So know thyself would be my advice to it. Now, for final, for final thought, the thing I was talking about at the beginning, I just couldn't figure it out. I didn't have time. I didn't want to, I couldn't find a good enough one to where I wanted to show you the theory behind it. There are trades, and there are certain types of traders who do this. There are trades that have always been intriguing to me, and I don't know if they'd work or not, but I, I, I'm convinced that it's worth trying to figure out. Where you set up ratio butterflies on either side, where you're basically at a net zero cost. How would you set up a butterfly for a net zero cost? Any any thoughts about how you would do that? Not for a credit either. Really for like five cent debit, five cent credit, like a net zero. That's right. You could do fixed premiums. You could do delta. Now, I'm going to tell you it will be tricky the last hour because of the same thing. Prices come in, so you're, the width is not going to be that big. So there's danger in those hills. Maybe you don't set it up for a net zero. Maybe you set it up for a debit. I don't know. Or a credit. But you do that. Yeah. It's it, To me, it's the holy grail that I've never found, that I'll never stop looking. I agree with you, Lizzie. You, you probably looked for the same reason I looked. This idea of saying, if there was a butterfly each side that was net zero, and you got out if it blew past it, but otherwise you let it ride. That's exactly right. Wizzy's uh, big fan of Wizzy. The idea is beautiful to me. The idea is something that only options can do. And that's why I love options so much. It intrigues me. It's the meme where the, the wife is like next to you in bed and she's like, he's probably thinking of that other girl. And I'm just laying on the other side just being like, but if there was a net zero butterfly on each side, it's that thing to me. It's like, 
the idea of saying if you have two tents on each side that you largely aren't having to pay for, what could happen? And I, uh, I want to encourage all of you guys to like with the back testing. This is the beauty of back testing. I'm not putting any money on that until I find the golden one. The secret is I put plenty of money on that without finding the golden one, and now I know I'm not putting money on that until I find the golden one. But expand your mind, expand your thinking when it comes to back testing and options, because options truly are the only kind of financial area in life where you can do these weird esoteric type trades where, you know, where I, hopefully you guys have all had to explain options to your friends or whatever, and they're like, so what do you do? And you're like, well, the type of trading I do is like, uh, if it moves 10 points down in the last hour or up 10 points or stay still, I do okay. And if it moves 20 points in the last hour, I get hurt. You know, I love that stuff. I, that's like, it's my favorite. It, it, maybe it comes from tell hedging, like the tell hedging background. But anyway, I just want to encourage you to like think outside the box in a world where there's full of groups that um, are teaching really good stuff and there's groups that are doing really stupid stuff. Um, you know, expand your mind, think through different ways to do it. Um, there are so many different ways uh, to be profitable in options, and there's so many different ways to just go broke in options. And that is the it's, it's the beautiful science, the sweet science. It's the sweetest of sciences, in my opinion. So, any questions about any of that? Hopefully, give you just some ideas. When in, again, when in doubt, you're going to trade three to four, collect more premium, or pay a debit. That's my advice for you. Other than that, I think we're. Uh, I think you guys could probably do much better than I showed you today. So, any other questions or anything? Thank you, Huckle John. I like that name, Martin G. Matt. You guys are very kind. I hope you guys have a fourth, a great Fourth of July week. If you're not uh, in America, I hope you just reflect on uh, why Fourth of July is a great holiday. <laughs>